Hello and welcome to Plasma. As you can see, it actually says, Welcome to Plasma. After five long years, we are finally ready to share our little game with you. As a small indie team, we're very thankful to have you play it. And we can't wait to see what crazy devices and worlds you will create and share. If you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. This is a sandbox creation tool that allows you to use visual programming to, well create stuff yeah there's a bunch of robots and various other things that you're going to be able to do all right so let's get started by learning the basics with the tutorial world and as you can see here we are look at this look at how cool this is all right so yeah obviously wasd okay so this is the rc oh hello there okay wait a minute how do i oh wait a minute okay that's very cool all right, so yeah, obviously I can now, I can turn this on, I can turn this off. I'm not sure if the light is working or anything like that, but yeah, that's very awesome. I like that. And what is this? Aha, uh -huh. we, we switched it to a solid, right? So that's a wireframe and that's a solid. So that basically, yeah, okay, so we can actually do that. And we can even hold this, as you can see right here. We can uh, move it back and forth. We can uh, turn it around as far as I'm aware. Can we? Uh, yep, yep, look at that. We can actually rotate it and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, do not touch. Right. What if I do... Well, <laughs> I turned it to a solid. Okay, it says do not touch. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? Okay, so let me actually just grab this. Put this on here. Can I actually put this on here? Wait a minute, how do I... Oh, no, no, not like that. Thank you very much. Okay, not like that. Let me... Like this... Wait a minute. There we go. Did it. Fantastic. Okay, so now I can press R on this. Boom, there you go. It's actually working. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with it. You can dock to or undock from the docking station with the F key. Okay. Ah, <gasps> aha. And there is... Oh, look at that. You can actually open the hood. You can open the hood, there's the lights, as you can see right there, the lights are coming on and off, and we can actually drive this thing around. Look at how cool that is. And now here's the thing, you can create all of this stuff. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the reason why I was saying to you, it's a sandbox engineering masterpiece. And so here we go, properties. Look at this, you can actually change the properties of basically every single thing in the game too. So for example, if we actually created additional mass here as well, you can even create bounce. I actually have no idea what they want me to do here. What about the intensity of the glow? I have no idea. The intensity of the lamp, okay, 100%. And we can actually make the range, let's make the range 15. I have no idea what that means either. Let's uh, change the color a little bit. All right, there we go. Save the device. Okay, so wait a minute. Um, no, I actually wanted to change that around a little bit. So let's do... Okay, we can actually... Aha, look at that. We can change the state on and off. So it actually goes to the color that I have specified, as you can see right there. So let me actually just make this a little bit, a little bit yellow. A little bit yellow. I, I prefer yellow a little bit more. Let's make well, a bit more orange, shall we say, a bit more orange. And now, uh, now what we can do is we can actually create bounce. So if I turn the bounce all the way up, and then we save this as a bouncy lamp. There we go. Done. Bouncy lamp. It bounces with glowiness. Wonderful. Yes. Wow. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully, this is not actually a thing that can be. Uh, downloaded by anyone. I mean, can you imagine? That would be pretty terrible for them. All right, so there you go. That's it. We also have, oh, okay, okay. we also have this stuff. Okay, well, I'm not going to be doing anything with that. And as you can see, look at that. It's now, it's now active. I, I don't know what the bounce actually means because the bounce apparently doesn't do anything right now. Maybe I, um, maybe it's not available. You know, maybe my bounciness is not, uh, not available with that particular thing. Okay, so open sketch. What is this? Okay. <laughs> okay, this is for the, the controller here. So basically what this means is uh, this is kind of like visual programming. So I don't know whether you've done any visual programming in the past, but there are a number of game engines and various other programming tools that you can use that actually have plugins that, ava that are available that will al allow you to mess around with visual programming. And this is the kind of thing that 
is in operation in this game. So what you can do is you can connect these two together and so when the button is pressed, instead of writing this out in Python or a similar, similar coding language, you can literally just do it from a visual perspective. So it's a lot easier. You don't need coding, coding knowledge or anything like that to be able to make that work. So in my opinion, that's very cool. I like that a great deal. Okay, so there you go. So now we've connected that. That's really nice. Now, what that means is that I'm now able to press this button and then it opens the door. Mm -hmm. Now, without that connection that we connected, mm -hmm, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Okay, so let's have a look. What else do I want to do here? Well, I want to grab... Wait a minute. No, I don't want to grab this. What's this? The engineering playground's first iteration is done and ready for testing. Excited to see the junior engineers go through it. Yes, I, I am very, yeah, I'm very junior, aren't I? And there's also ping here. Not pong, but ping. So, yeah, you can see here that I can actually interact with this. So if I click this, this actually starts. And then we can actually play this, amusingly enough. Boom. Okay, I, I can't see the top half of the screen. Oh, no. Ah, I failed. Oh, no. That was, that was terrible. Okay, well, as you can see, very, very cool that we are actually able to play ping in this game. So if I say that we want to... Okay, so okay, can I actually have a look at this? I'd like to see how this works. Because there's bound to be visual programming in this as well. Send us your feedback. You can also join the Discord if you so desire and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, so yeah. Now we can just move on and we can now have a look and see what's going on here. So if I, oh, look at this. Oh, now that's really cool. Look at that. We can literally change the time of day with this slider. Yeah, if you thought the limits of creativity were going to be, well, limited in this game, then think again. Because there's so much you can do with this. And this is obviously a grand example of it. Huge amounts of different things you're going to be able to do here. So for example, let's say we want to do this. Does this do anything? If I flip that, it stops it. If I, what, what does this do? Ah, that turns it up, doesn't it? Yeah, that makes it go faster. And we can actually get on this as well, as you can see right here, because there's a docking station in the seat. And that will allow the player to mount whatever creation that you've made. So that's actually really cool. Now, I can actually make this slower as well, I believe, can't I? Yeah. As you can see, it's now slowed all the way down. And this is super fast. Look at that. That's going crazy right there. So there is actually an obstacle course over there. I'm not sure what the obstacle course is for, but there is something here. Hmm... Okay, wait a minute. Hello. Does this follow me? Yeah, yeah. It seems to have been programmed to follow me. That's very cool as well. All right, so what's what's going on here? Okay, so interact. Okay, so that basically... Okay, so wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no, puzzles. Oh, dear. Puzzles are not my, not my uh, strong suit. Let's just say that. All right, so let's open the sketch here. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. This is very in-depth, as you might expect, but let's just actually open up the first one, first of all. Button toggles the lamp on and off. Try deleting the connection by hovering over it, so it highlights, and right-click on it. Then try creating your own connection. These two blue nodes are connected with a cyan connection. Okay, so if I connect, if I d delete that, if we, uh, if we connect this to, um, I don't know, intensity, and then we turn the intensity up, that is what's going to happen. So when we release it, that's what's going to happen. So let's just, uh, let's try it out, shall we? So if I click this, oh, well, that just turned it off. Well, that didn't really work, did it? But what about if I do this? Boom. No, that, did, that, that also didn't do anything. Okay, great. Uh, okay, what about if I delete this connection and then we turn it on? Just completely. Okay, that also didn't work. Uh, can you tell I'm terrible at this kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The intensity was at 0%. Why was it at 0? Okay, it, it shouldn't be at 0. There we go. Okay, now it's at 0 again, though. Oh, that's really weird. Wait a minute. <gasps> no, I think I've just been looking at it all wrong. Okay, wait a minute. Let's just change this to 15 seconds. And then the intensity will go up to 100% when 
when the button is released after 15 seconds. That's that's how it should work at least. So let's click that. As you can see, the uh, the thing is nothing is not doing anything right now. But uh, after 15 seconds, I, I mean, I'm only I'm only summarizing, right? I'm only uh, assuming, shall we say, that that is exactly what's going to happen. Is it? Is it actually going to happen? Because it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Well, what about if I change its color then? That might be a little bit easier for me because I am an absolute imbecile, apparently. Okay, so let's change it to a pink, pinkish color. And let's oh wow look at that you can literally select your data type as well that's actually kind of amazing okay so let's just do none and let's just have this ha let's just be the thing okay so it's going to turn on okay so it's turned on and it turns to okay wait a minute so if i press that okay so let me let me actually just delete all of this and let's see what happens okay so nothing happens when i when i press this of course so if i press this now let's make it a toggle and that turns it on and off, as you can see. So the toggle is working. So what about if I were to press this and change the color? Let's change the color back to that other color that we had. So as you can see, that now doesn't work any further. So what about if we move on to the next one? Let's have a look. See the components to the left? These are all components attached to this device. You can drag them from the list and into the sketch to create a node for that component. So for example, this is the sketch right here. So you can see there's a button. Oh, the lamp node is missing. Can you drag the lamp into the sketch? Yes, I can. There we go. So this is where it is, like so. And then you can do something like this, where you can do that, like so. And you can change the, the color, obviously, if you want to do that. You can also try the LED. So there's the LED right here. So for example, we can actually do something with this as well. So can we actually do multiple? Yes, we can. So look at this. If I press this, then we can actually change the color of this to something else. So let's just do that to pink. And we can do this to this as well. So what about if I change this to like a greenish color? What actually happens when I press this now? Apparently nothing, because that's that's not really working out too well, is it? Okay, wait, wait a minute. What if we change this? Like, can, can I actually change this to something? Yeah, let's change that to none. And that, that still does not do anything. Okay, well, I'm obviously not understanding anything here because I am terrible. The button sets the target speed of the motor to 100 when pressed and zero when released. Can you figure out how to change the values in the button? Well, yeah, I mean, there. I, I can easily do that. There we go. So 75. Let's put it to 75. And uh, yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's press it. And as you can see, while it's pressed, it moves at 75%. But while it isn't pressed, it stops. So I understood that, at least. Ugh, isn't that amazing? The slider outputs 0 to 100% from its output position. The target speed of the motor converts percentages to degrees per second. Connect the slider's output position to the content property of the LCD to see its value. Okay. Notice how the motor does not have on or off commands. Instead, it reacts to the data that is fed to its properties. Properties can be changed manually in its node or by connecting it to another node. Like in this case, the slider's output position. But how do we spin it faster? Am I right? Check out the next sketch where I'll introduce you to logic nodes that will help you do just that. Okay, so as you can see right here, so um, connect the slider's output position to the content property of the LCD. So that's here, and then, well, uh, to see its value, well, we have none. We have none right there. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, so yeah, as you can see, oh, 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 yeah, it's actually displaying the value now, as you can see, 41%. So if I actually increase this to 100%, you can see here that it's going to be Going around and around. Oh, yes, it is. So let's actually have a look at the logic nodes now. Green nodes are logic nodes. This one maps the 0 to 100% range to a defined range. In this case, from 0 to 500. The output of the percentage mapper is passed to the target speed of the motor. Connect the number output of the percentage mapper to the content property of the LCD to see its value. All right, easy enough. There we go. Done. 
See the connections from the slider to the percentage mapper? They are both pink and cyan. The pink connection carries the percentage value from the output position of the slider to the percentage property in the percentage mapper. The cyan one triggers the map command of the percentage mapper and the pink connection is always executed before the cyan connection to ensure it maps the correct value. All right, so we can actually have a look see here and you can see here that this now goes even faster. It goes up to 500. I actually have no idea how they even made it go to 500. Let's actually have a look here. So there's the target speed is 500. Actually, can I can I increase this to 1000? I can. Now it's going even faster. Look at that. Wait a minute. Is it can it even go faster than this? Wait a minute. Let me just stop that and then no, it goes it goes at 500 again. So can I actually make it go faster? Yeah, I might be able to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I actually do that? I, I'm I'm a bit skeptical. I don't know whether I'll be able to do that because whenever I've messed with this in the past, well, the, the, the not too distant past, it hasn't really worked out too well for me. I just did 10,000. Let's not do that. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look. So this is actually 1,000 now. So let me just... Yep, no, 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 it actually does go to a thousand. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Logic nodes allow you to do all sorts of coding. Math, mapping, testing, tweening, even blitting and Lua scripting, if you so desire. This one tests the output analog value of the knob to the upper and lower limit of the range tester, which sends messages to the screen accordingly. Try clicking on the T icon next to the outputs of the range tester to change the data type. Okay. So wait a second, the T, where's that? Try clicking on the T icon. Mm, I do not see a T icon. I do not see that. Am I, am I stupid? Ah, there's the T icon. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. To change the data type. Okay, so I can change it right here. So we can change it to whatever we want. So if I change it to Boolean, I don't, this doesn't really, I don't know where, I don't know what that does. We can browse the logic no logic node library by pressing spacebar. Logic nodes differ from component nodes by always needing commands to operate. In this case, we're sending the output analog value of the knob to the value property of the range tester, but nothing happens until the test command is also triggered in the same node. Right. Okay, so if I change this, as you can see, it actually does change it. Look at this. Within, under, and then false. So that's Boolean, obviously. The Boolean one is, is false. So, for example, if I want to change this once again, so let's say that I want to change this and I want to change it to an image, and we can change the image to something like, I don't know, uh, uh, Tutorial E, for example. So if we want to do that, then when we turn the knob to that position, as you can see right here, if I turn it, it will change it to E on the display. Pretty cool. I like that. And now we have this, which is our final sketch. Variables are pieces of data that can be referenced as a data type. In this case, the knob writes its output analog value to the variable writer for the variable val. Notice how there isn't a connection to the value property of the digital gauge, and it still works. And that's because its data type has been set to the val variable. Variables can be created by opening up the variables win window in the upper left. Can you change the data type of the content on the LCD to the val variable? Right. Can I? Can I actually? Of the content on the LCD to the val variable. Uh, yes, I can do that actually. That's, that's pretty simple. So what you can do is you can literally just change that to variable right there change it to val and then click OK and there you go. So now if I if I put that over here, that should be that should theoretically be working. There's a lot more to learn about sketches. One good way to learn is to experiment with it. Try out different logic nodes and components, connect them together and create behaviors. Another good way to learn is to browse the shared devices or look at the devices in the world around you. We've unlocked the access to the sketch for a number of devices outside. So for example, if I now use this, now you can see exactly what's going on with the various knobs and the various LCD displays. And it says exactly what you want it to say. For example, 41%. Yes, indeed. And this spider is still attempting to follow me. But um, as, as you know, yes, that didn't really work out too well. So I'm just going to turn it off for the moment. Okay, so now is a building area what you wanted? Well, here it is. How to build a, well, how to build in Plasma. 
every device is structured in the same way as a tree. Usually the first component to respond will be the root component. Any other component will represent a branch. This concept is important when we want to detach components or attach them to another device. The tree-like hierarchy can be visualized by pressing L while looking at the device. This special icon represents the root component and the lines showing the different branches. Okay, okay, I see how it is. I see how it is. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna be very interesting indeed. Okay, so uh, there is the cube. Okay, I see it. Okay. Well, the one thing I haven't actually checked out yet, apart from the uh, building over there, because that was a little bit uh, a little bit overwhelming for me, but we're actually going to go and take a look at the obstacle course, because there is actually a way that we can run. As you can see, I'm moving very, very fast, and there's also a way that we can crouch as well. And what else do we have here? Well, obviously jumping, and we can also fly. Wow, okay. That's very cool. And look at that, there we go, we did it. Okay, so we now have a very rudimentary idea of how to navigate the world. And you can see here, I can actually fly high above, basically with gliding, all kinds of gliding abilities right here. And apart from that, you actually can create whatever you want to do. So for example, I can actually go to this menu right here. And let's say I wanted to create, I don't know, a plasma cannon or something like that, I would be able to do that with these components. And as you no doubt saw in the tutorial there, uh, for example, I can actually do things like this. So I can actually grab this and we can connect these things together. And that's actually then also available with the tree hierarchy as the uh, wonderful voice on the tutorial taught us about. And that allows you to see exactly how this is all connected together. So if I wanted to, um, let's say that I wanted to actually get into more advanced things. Let's say that I wanted to make this into something that would actually move around and do stuff. Well, obviously I'd be able to do that by entering into the controllers. So as you can see, no controllers found on this device. Spawn one and attach it. And so I'm going to need to do that. So for example, let's say, uh, where, where, where are the controllers? I actually have no idea where any of these things are, but you obviously you can do that yourself in your own time. There's the controller right there. So let's say that I wanted to do that on the top. And then we can go in here and then we can literally create whatever we wanted. So for example, we have a motor here and we have the ticker and so on. And you're going to be able to create whatever you want to do with these things. So for example, you can create one of those spiders, you can create a, um, a vehicle if you want to do that as well. And look at this, there we go. Okay, so the training has now, I don't I don't think I'm I don't think I'm ready. Uh, no offense, I think I'm probably going to absolutely murder myself just by my first creation. My first creation is probably going to be Skynet. Although to be fair, my Skynet, my Skynet would probably not be able to make a piece of toast let alone launch nukes. That's what's going to happen there. Anyway, we have a new message. Great job finishing your training, junior engineer. Plasma Labs is happy to have you on board. We deployed this home base for your convenience. Explore it and get accustomed to it. We also dropped a few crates here and there containing the first devices you will have to finish assembling and test. Feel free to customize them. Remember to report here when you're done. All right, so there you go. Crate one, two, three. We can now complete all of those. And we have a to-do list as well, as you can see right here. Discover worlds, create a device, share a device, play a stage world, and learn sketch. Otherwise, we need to do this as well. Yeah, find, <laughs> find this board. Done. Yes, we did do that. Indeed. We, indeed, we did do that. Okay, so now we can actually make our way out of here. And look at, look at the world. Look at the world. It's so incredibly colorful. I love it. And it's also relatively open too. So you can pretty much go wherever you want. And what do we have going on here? Here is the remote and the missing components for the drone. Just follow the instructions on the yellow notes and you'll get it flying in no time and so as you can see there is literally a drone right here and there's no controller apparently found on this so that's kind of unfortunate so yeah we're gonna have to obviously see what we can do about that but there's also a number of other activities that we're going to be able to do 
down here as well. For example, there's a quad bike here. Look at how cool that is. I would love to be able to repair this too. But you know what? I'm going to leave this to you. So if you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.